just one last point uh, before we have your audience. How does one bring this attitude in conflicts and differences in a collective aspiration of a vision? One conversation the mother, Satprem had with the mother just came to my mind. Satprem asked the mother something, mother said, it is very difficult for the human mind to understand how the supreme consciousness can be conscious of everything at the same time. The whole universe, your mind, what is going on, my mind and mosquito fluttering its wings and some toad croaking somewhere in a ditch. Not one for me. Imagine the number of live organisms happening and the Supreme Consciousness is conscious of everything at the same time. And then she added something which makes it even more interesting. She said, in the microscope. Means she knows how many times each mosquito is fluttering its wings. And then we don't have to think. She's constantly present in our thoughts, in our emotions. She's there. And very interesting thing which happened with Udar, Udar Pinto. You know, after almost 25 years in the ashram, he was the one to whom the task of building the Samadhi for Sherbindo was given. And he was somebody who was known for working in the ashram. He goes and asks the mother, Mother, how am I progressing in the sadhana? And mother says, you are not progressing at all. You are not doing any yoga. He is surprised. Then he, mother says, you know, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? He says, I wake up. He tell me in detail. He said, I brush my teeth first. When you are brushing your teeth, am I there with you? That is something. Because she is constantly present. And not only that, when my hand is moving, it's she who is moving. You see, there have been those underlined this many times. There is only one energy which does everything. It's my mind. My mind, by its nature, is given to division. So if I see a fan moving, I'm seeing the divine in movement. It's not just a fan. It's a manifestation and there is only one consciousness, one being, one force. Nothing else. So that's reality. Remembering is to remember. Because Shermito once said, and it's possible, like, constantly remember the mother, if possible, thinking of her as the Divine Mother. Why should he say that? Because when you think of her as the Divine Mother, you are not humanizing her. She is the supreme conscious force that dominates all existence. And that is where when the point comes of being a servitor and the servant, you see, when we talk about the servitor, we have to remember Sherbindo's sonnet, the Divine Worker. A wonderful line there. Thy smile within my heart makes all this. This defines, it just defines the servitor. He doesn't need anything else. A servant is doing something because he's getting something in return. He's being taken care of, maybe given some money, accommodation, and he works in return for that. A servitor simply because he loves the one he serves, he adores. Yeah. He doesn't but not by, he cannot think of, you know, not serving. Like, if you are deeply in love with someone, you know, maybe your child, constantly you are looking, oh, he's going there, you know, I saw, see a fruit, I want to buy it for my child. You are so happy. That smile within your heart comes spontaneously when you serve the Divine. And the Divine is in everything, that's the whole point of the yoga. It's not that, you know, and I'm sitting in meditation. <coughs> oh, I'm with the Divine. I'm walking, talking, doing some, you know, odd little jobs. That's what Mother told you that. When you are brushing your teeth, if you are brushing it with me, then you are doing yoga. And that's what we have to remember when we are working. <coughs> that, you know, somebody <coughs> with, where many of the ashram people know, you know, Dhuman Bhai, Chuni Bhai Patel. Was known as the mother's worker, and he would not even come 
for the you know distribution of blessing packets. And I don't know how true it is, but it is told that he used to have a ladder when mother was in her room on the second floor. That from the balcony opposite, he will put the ladder, climb up the ladder to the mother's window, and talk to the mother and come back not to waste time. <coughs> he had that constant smile, which was his reward. And mother talked about Hanuman also, because once we talk about servitors in the Indian context, we always talk about Hanuman, because he was serving Rama. And mother said, Hanuman is the vital, the life force surrendered to the divine. So Hanuman, you, that is a, uh, the Hanuman Chalisa, there is a wonderful line which comes in that Chalisa. Ram Kaj Karibe Ko Aato. He is avid to do the work. Not that, you know, he says, okay, I come to the yoga, so now I will be doing the work for the mother or for the divine. He wants more and more of it. And the, as uh, yeah, I think Kirti was saying, mother herself gave that example, you know. <laughs> right from the morning till about, you know, two o'clock in the night, constantly she was doing, she was working. Because <laughs> she didn't say, you know, okay, you know, I am the Divine Mother, so I will serve only the Divine Lord. She saw the Lord everywhere because she knew that all this is nothing but the Divine. When you have that attitude, you don't see other people, and then there are no conflicts. Mm. It's a spontaneous movement that comes from within, and love, the, the servitude becomes a joy. There's no greater joy. So to this